home after hiking over 2,653 miles on the PCT. As suspected, my gear changed along the way. After being out on a trail for over six months, I knew it would happen. Even though I got all my gear dialed in, I knew exactly what I was taking, I checked my weights, I'd done all my research, things changed. I lost weight, so I had to get different clothing, different gear failed on me, so I replaced it. So what I'm gonna do in this video is just go through the changes and explain what's left in my pack after hiking the PCT. Now I have done a previous video about the gear that I was taking with me on the PCT called PCT Gear List 2019. So check that out. I will put it in the description box below or a little pop up up here. And that goes into all the gear that I have with me that I took out on the PCT with all the descriptions in detail. Everything that has stayed the same on that gear, I will just run through briefly in this video and not go into too much detail. So if you do want more, just check that video out. I've also got a lighter pack list online, so feel free to have a look at that. That's got everything written in detail too, so I will make sure I've updated that for you. And again, I will put the link of that in the description box below. And also, I'm going to be doing some gear review videos of how things have held up. So the Big Agnes Tiger Wall 2 that I took out with me, my sleeping system, and also my new pack. So I will do proper detailed videos on them, so keep an eye out for them on my channel coming soon. <laughs> But for now, let me start showing you what has been left in my pack. Now, one thing that changed for me, which I must admit I wasn't very happy about, was my pack, and I loved my original pack. It was the Osprey Asia 48, but because I had a size small, it was a 45 litre. It was so lightweight, it was so snug, it held all my gear perfectly, had everything, it was quite minimal. Oh, I was so happy with that pack when I first started with it, and I didn't expect to have to change it. But unfortunately, the pack did not like me. And unfortunately, again, it has been a problem with a few hikers this season. And it's not just me that it happened to, but when you carry a certain amount of weight in it, the shoulders and the um, padding on the actual straps were just not supportive enough. And that pack said on the website that it could hold up to 40 pounds. But unfortunately, when you get above 30 pounds, it starts causing people problems. I did speak to Osprey and they replaced my pack free of charge for me because of the problems that I'd had with it, which were great for the company. You know, they, they lived up to their word and they honored the guarantee. But they did also tell me verbally that, and on an email that that pack really shouldn't go above 30 pounds, even though it said 40 pounds on the website, which is what was a little bit misleading for me. I liked the pack when I had about 25 pounds to 30 pounds of weight in it and it was very perfectly sized for all my gear. However, I had to change because I was black and blue. My hips and my shoulder blades and my, my collar bones, they were everywhere was bruised and black and I was starting to get sores and my hips were just, I even exhausted the hip belt unfortunately so I had it as tight as it would go. But unfortunately, because I'd lost quite a lot of weight whilst on the trip, it wouldn't go any tighter, which meant my shoulders were taking a lot of the weight. So Osprey recommended I change to this, which is the Aura AG65. Now this is a lot heavier, and I only wanted like a 45 litre pack, but this was comfortable. Heavier, <laughs> but comfortable, because it had so much more cushioning on the shoulder straps, and also the hip belts hugged me extremely well. So. The hip belt, again, I had to tighten to the tight, tightest point, but because it had these grippy hip um, lower area here, it held me better, which meant that there wasn't so much weight in my shoulders. So I didn't need to use all this pack. There was too much of it. <laughs> there was too much space left, but it was more comfortable and it did make my chip more manageable. Something I got rid of from my pack are these on go pods and these were great to start with when I had my smaller pack but I just did not need the extra storage so I sent them home. The first things to change on trail were my clothes because I lost weight pretty quickly to start with and I also found that the clothes I was wearing just weren't really working out for me. So let me just go through the changes first and then I'll tell you what I kept as well from the very beginning. One of the first things was this top. So I started off with an Orvis shirt and I swapped it out 
for this Rab top, which is called the Pulse Hoodie. It has like a UPF rating of 30. I found it extremely comfortable, lightweight. It protected me from the heat, but also had really good odor control as well. The shirt that I was wearing, I found was just too baggy for me. It was too uncomfortable with my pack. And I just figured I prefer hiking in this. If I got too hot, I'd roll the sleeves up on it. If it got windy, I'd put the hood up. It was a great switch. I thoroughly enjoyed wearing this and I really like the colour as well. That's the first thing I changed. I also then changed my trousers. I was wearing the North Face Horizon convertible trousers to start with and after stitching them up several times I realised it was time to swap them. I couldn't find any trousers in my size so I actually ended up going for these Marmot Megan midweight midweight tights which at first I wasn't too sure about but I thoroughly enjoyed hiking in tights which is something I never thought I'd enjoy doing and these lasted pretty good they are a little bit beaten up now they've got stitches and holes all over the place but I wore these throughout the whole Sierra and they kept me warm I then had to buy another pair of trousers because the weather was changing towards the end and getting pretty cold and I bought these which are the Columbia Omnishield Saturday Trail Pants and these were comfortable as well and they were much nicer than the original North Face trousers I had because they were a bit more clingy and also they weren't as wide at the bottom around the ankle so they stayed above my trainers as I was hiking. In the end I used to wear my tights with these over the top which worked well because then I'd then have my top and also this fleece that I'm wearing as well. So that was kind of my gear towards the end of the trip so I had all four on at once. I also changed my underwear. I started off with two pairs of the Ex Officio Give and Go Bikini Briefs. One pair just didn't do very well in the laundrette. <laughs> it got a little bit um, snagged on something. So I ended up swapping out for a pair of Patagonia Briefs and these were really comfortable. Also my shoes. I started off with a pair of Brooks Castagadia 12s. I then got two pairs of Brooks Cascadia 13s and I ended the trail with these which were Brooks Cascadia 14s. So I tried the full range and I must admit they were all very comfortable but I found that the 12s and the 14s were more durable. The 13s not so good so I'm glad that they've been replaced and updated. From my original gear I still had my buff and I probably wore that every single day. This is the one with the UV protection in the landscape design. I have my Patagonia bra which is a switchback bra and I also had my darn tough socks so I actually had two pairs for hiking during the day. And now for some items of clothing that I didn't necessarily wear all the time so these are mainly in my pack or sometimes being worn. First of all I can't go without mentioning my trusty Crocs and these stayed with me the whole time and I was so glad I took a spare pair of shoes because these were an item that I wasn't 100% sure about taking but I'm so glad I did. Not only were they great for my feet to be able to breathe at night when I'd been wearing my trail runners all day long, it was just something nice to be able to wear without getting my feet dirty or having to put my feet into the same pair of shoes that I'd had on all day. They were great for crossing rivers, the shallow ones. Obviously for the, the more severe river crossings or more dangerous river crossings, I always wore my trail runners. So I wore these on the shallow ones and they were just great as well to have at night time if you needed to get up in the night. They were great to just slip on, go to the toilet and especially if your shoes got really wet in the daytime. When it's cold, they do not dry. So having these was, oh, I'm so glad I took a spare pair of shoes. So I'll highly recommend anybody taking some flip flops or some Crocs or something with you because it is, it is completely worth that little bit of extra weight. Another item that stayed with me throughout were these Rab Power Stretch Gloves and these even stayed with me throughout the whole desert section because at night time I got cold and these, oh, some people sent their, their hats and their gloves and everything away and then collected them when they did the Sierra but I kept hold of everything and I'm so glad I did because not only did I wear these but I also wore my Patagonia beanie as well and this stayed with me throughout. I was wearing this all the time, I loved this hat. Another item of clothing is my hat and this is the North Face Horizon hat. It's got an SPF rating in it, kept the sun out of my eyes and I wore this quite a lot, especially in the beginning. 
Towards the middle of the trip, I stopped wearing it and I used to use my buff quite a lot because I think my sun, my skin had built up quite a resistance to the sun. I was always wearing SPF factor 50. Sometimes I dropped it down to 30 when it was cloudy, but I always kept my face protected with sunscreen. But this was great to keep it out of my face when it was really hot and also to protect my head too. I carried with me some waterproofs. So the original waterproof trousers that I started with were the North Face ones. These are absolutely wrecked now. They have got like duct tape on them where they're ripped in the middle they're way too big for me these are actually going to get decluttered because they are not suitable and I do have a spare set now at home but they were really good not only for keeping me dry but also for keeping me warm as well on those windy and cold days I used to wear them over the top of my tights I also had a spare pair of darn tough socks so I took out three pairs in total so one that I was wearing and this was a spare pair for the daytime and my original waterproof jacket which was the innovate storm shell wind resistant and waterproof top which it was very very good for light showers and rain if it only lasted a couple of hours and then i could wear my jacket and it dry but this wasn't very suitable when it rained all the time it got wet and it didn't dry properly which i will explain in a minute how i actually combated that I also carried with me the whole time the Patagonia Nano Air Puffy with the hood and I love this jacket. <laughs> I did start feeling a little bit green because I was wearing my green tights, my green top, my green puffy, my green hat. <laughs> Didn't quite think it all through but this kept me warm and it kept me cosy. I wore it sometimes even in bed if it was very cold and then during the day it was great because with it being synthetic, I managed to hike in it for quite a while without getting too hot and sweaty because it breathed very well. I believe a lot of the down puffy jackets you can't wear for very long because you get overheated or too sweaty in them. So I love this purchase. It was a great, great thing to take with me. Um, I wouldn't be without a puffy now. <laughs> I actually lived in it. Now for the items that I got additional. So towards the end, like I mentioned before, the rain got really bad and there was days where it was consecutive so my stuff did not dry out and that waterproof jacket stayed wet once it got wet so i upgraded to this patagonia torrent shell waterproof coat and this was near the end i actually got this i think it was when i got to oregon so it was only in the last month and i found it again in the sales at rei which was fantastic but it's a heavier duty waterproof jacket. It's still lightweight, but it's much better than the one I had before. And this kept me dry. There, there was no water that went through this and it kept me a lot warmer as well. So I would actually wear this over my puffy, over my fleece and over my rab top as well. Loved this and it wasn't green. <laughs> I also got these gloves. So these are Cirrus Extreme. I think that's how you pronounce it, Cirrus. These are waterproof gloves and all weather gloves I think they were called in the women's size extra small and these kept my hands warm. I was wearing my power stretch gloves but unfortunately I didn't want to wear them when it was raining because once they got wet they stayed wet and there was no way of drying them out and my hands got absolutely freezing when it was cold. So these were a bit of a pricey purchase. I didn't really want to spend a lot of money on something like this but in the end I just had to. It My hands were felt like they were frozen to my trekking poles at some points and it hurt it was so painful i'm glad i got these um, and i will probably have these for many many years to come they were definitely worth it and last but not least these socks so these are nrs neoprene wet socks and they're 0.5 millimeter these were to keep my feet warm not necessarily dry but warm because i tried to look for some waterproof boots when I got to Oregon, when all the snow started. But unfortunately, there was none available in my size or that were just purely synthetic. A lot of them had either leather or glue from animals and things like that. So I found that very tricky and I needed something quick and I needed something to keep my feet warm towards the end. These did a fantastic job. So what I would do is I'd put my darn tough socks on and I would wear these over the top of those and then I'd wear them in my trainers, in my trail runners and they kept my feet warm. They help insulate, they add you know, a heat source to my feet when they were literally numb in the snow all day long. 
The other thing that is missing is my outdoor research sun gloves, which I had at the very beginning of the trip. I wore them throughout the desert and they were fantastic because they stopped my hands from getting burnt. But I found that after the Sierra section, I just didn't need them any longer. I didn't feel like my hands needed protecting that much anymore because the sun wasn't as strong. And I felt my, my sunscreen was doing just a good enough job as the gloves were. So I actually decided to get rid of those and send them home. Now the final items for my clothing are my sleepwear and I absolutely loved <laughs> these Patagonia Capelline Thermal Weight Base Layers and I wore these as my pyjamas so I've got the bottoms and the top and I absolutely loved these. They were comfortable, they kept me warm and they held their shape pretty well. Towards the ends the bottoms got a little bit baggy after using a lot of laundrette washing machines and the top stayed in great shape throughout so I'm very pleased with these two, I'm glad I chose them. I also wore in bed the Darn Tufts, so this is my third pair of socks that I took with me and they were worn just specifically for sleeping in. I always kept these separate so that I'd always have a pair of dry socks to sleep in. The new purchases for sleepwear is when I got very cold towards the end and I mean cold. <laughs> when I got to, I think it was Etna, I realised that I needed another layer because I was wearing my puffy in bed but I was still chilly. So I purchased <laughs> my very bright leggings and also another fleece that was just for wearing over my thermals to sleep in. These were both from a charity shop or thrift shop that you call them in America and I carried these. Yes they're bulky, yes they're a bit heavier but towards the end I just did not care about weight. I just wanted to be warm and they kept me warm in bed so that was the main thing. Another thing that changed on trail were my sunglasses and I learned a lesson with my old ones. I had a pair of fossils that I'd had for many years and I did not realise they were not polarised. So anybody please hiking the PCT or heading out in snow for more than one day, please do yourself a favour and make sure that your glasses are polarised because I was squinting, I was uncomfortable, my eyes hurt, but the second I got these from Suncloud and started wearing them, I was so much happier. So please, make sure your sunglasses are polarised before you head out on trail. My shelter setup didn't change too much. One thing you will notice that is missing is the MSR Camring cord tensioners for the tent. I took them out with me but I never used them, I just did not need them. I felt the tent did a great job and I didn't need any of the cords to be changed. So I kept the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2. I also had the ground sheet from Big Agnes, some tent stakes that came with it and also my Kunjix extra tent stakes that I took with me. And I am so glad I did because some of these did not face very well. <laughs> they just, the hard ground just bent about three of them. But I had extra so I was okay. Another thing that I did do during the trip was have a waterproof liner that went underneath the ground sheet because when it was snowy or wet, I would find that the water would come through and permeate through the ground sheet into the tent. So I was grateful to have that when the weather got bad. Now my sleep system hardly changed whilst out on trail. I think I was one of the fortunate hikers that had great success with the Thermarest Neo Air. This is the x Light women's version and some people complained that there's either started um, leaking or their valves started having problems. I was very fortunate I never had any problems at all with this. I also used the pump sack that went with it and these two were great together. The inside never got mouldy. It is a little bit dirty but I used to wash it as wet when I could, just give it a little wipe down. I always made sure the base of my tent was okay so there was no big rocks or twigs or anything like that that could jab it. <laughs> so this proved me well, it was so comfortable to have something to lie on that was an air mattress because there were some grounds that were very rough and very rocky so I thoroughly enjoyed sleeping on this. I didn't enjoy the noise, it was creaky unfortunately and it did stay a little bit creaky throughout the whole trip but it was worth it for the comfort. I know a lot of people just took the pads but they weren't as comfortable so it is a little bit heavier but it was more compact and extremely comfortable. 
the pump sack I originally started using to keep my sleeping bag in and also some other items in as a bit of a waterproof or water resistant lining but in the end this just ended up being to inflate this so it didn't get mouldy inside. My pillow stayed the same as well which is the Cetus Summit Aeros pillow which is the ultralight, the regular one which is an inflatable one. Again I wouldn't have done without this, it was great for me because some people use their clothes and wrap them up and sleep with them but in the end I think I was wearing all my clothes in bed so I would have been without <laughs> so this was a great little thing to take with me. Now my sleeping bag didn't change, that's the Mountain Hardware Lamina Z Flame and I think it's a 21 degree Fahrenheit bag but the thing that did change is this which is the Sea to Summit waterproof bag and I got this to replace the original compress sack that came with the sleeping bag because I needed something that was a lot more waterproof than what that was providing. It's a little bit more lightweight as well but for the torrential rain that I had towards the end I needed something that was going to keep my sleeping bag dry. The sleeping bag itself I was incredibly happy with. It got damp very slightly on the top of the bag due to condensation a few times but it dried very quickly and when it was damp on top it never permeated through the bag itself so I always stayed dry. I wouldn't have changed this sleeping bag for the world. I know it was heavy and I know it was bulky but like I've said in previous videos I will only choose synthetic products and this was just a fantastic sleeping bag and I oh, I can't say enough good things about it. I loved it, absolutely loved it. Final thing that I got, which is the Cetus Summit Thermolite Fabric Reactor Compact Plus in short. Again, towards the end, I was just feeling the cold so much. I needed some extra insulation. And this went on the inside of my sleeping bag. And it's a material, so it wasn't silk. It's like a, a nice, soft, fleecy material. And having that to wrap around me inside my bag kept me toasty warm on a night time. And that is my sleep kit. Two things got taken away from my cook system. The first is a Sea to Summit X mug, which actually cracked and then I realised I didn't need to replace it. Even though I really enjoyed having a coffee with my porridge on a morning, I found that I could have a coffee first and then my porridge. And it was worth saving that little bit of extra weight. Another thing that has gone is the Platypus 2 litre water bladder. That actually started leaking on me. I got a second one, that started leaking on me. So what I ended up doing was just using two 1 litre smart water bottles or life bottles and kept them in the side of my pack and I felt that that worked just good enough. The items that remained are from the original video. So I have my Snow Peak cook pot which is the 700ml. I've got an Evernew water bladder which is 1.5 litre my Soya Squeeze, my Sea to Summit Spork, MSR Pocket Rocket 2, a bandana which I actually ended up cutting into a quarter because I only needed a small amount to dry my pot and the Osprey bag here which is a dry bag where I kept my food. Now for the electronics I kept the Anchor Power Core 2 2000 milliamp power bank with a cable I also took the quick charge wall plug because I found that when time was of the essence and there's lots of hikers wanting to charge devices that did actually charge my power bank up in four hours rather than eight. I also had the Canon PowerShot G7X Mark II camera which I'm currently used to film which is why it's not shown in this picture with some memory cards, some spare batteries. I actually took a total of three batteries and four memory cards. I've got my iPhone 7 with the cable as well as an SD card reader for my iPhone and I also got this as an additional item which is just a USB charging device for the US plug socket. I have an instant charger which was for emergencies and this would actually power up my phone if I needed it for up to two hours and I had to purchase some different headphones because my previous ones broke. I've got my Garmin InReach Explorer I also continue to carry my Pedco Ultrapod 2 for my camera. All these were resting on a 6 litre Osprey dry bag which is where I kept all my electronics. One thing I always did was make sure I carried three spare AAA batteries for my head torch. Another thing that I started with but got rid of was the Sea to Summit Nano head net. I could not have been without this head net. There were times when we were just swarmed by tiny little flying insects, whether it was mosquitoes or gnats. Definitely something that needs to be in everybody's pack if they're hiking the PCT. 
For my toiletries and medical, what you will notice that is missing are the following. So some body glide, I just found I didn't use it. Toothpaste, I ended up using my coconut oil in the end because I just found it difficult to get cruelty free toothpaste in certain resupply areas. I got rid of my toothbrush cover and instead I just kept my toothbrush in a little Ziploc bag with the rest of my items. And Dr. Bronner's soap, I just found I never used soap out on trail but only when I got into town. So I'd just buy a little miniature size of soap or something like that when I got into town and that was fine. I continued to use my Diva Cup, which I found worked really well for me on trail. I got some new lip balm because the one I originally went out with obviously ran out and this is a cinnamon flavor hemp balm. I've got my bamboo toothbrush, my teepee, coconut oil, hair tie, earplugs, and a new addition which replaced my towel and this is a bandana I actually got at Casa de Luna so I ended up just using that for my body if I needed it I also got some Arnicare ointment and that was for rubbing on joints or ligaments and certain ailments and it just helped bring out bruises and also take down a bit of swelling as well my coconut oil I used as a moisturiser for my hair and also for a toothpaste near the end and then lastly, I have my medical kit, which again, didn't change too much. I added some Neosporin to it and extra Leuka tape, but otherwise it stayed pretty much the same. You'll notice the addition of a Juice of Spades trowel. I don't need to explain why. <laughs> and tissues, so I got toilet paper or tissues when I needed. I had hand sanitizer in here, which I carried on my pack at all times. I also had some intimate wipes, which are like baby wipes. Another thing I added to my first aid kit, which I took on a daily basis, was vitamin B12 and magnesium. I also used these a few times on trail as well, which are mini compressed towels that are disposable. And you just add water to them and they expand. They were really useful. A few items that I purchased along the way, but also got rid of along the way, were my Catula Micro Spikes. I also had a umbrella, which was used for the sun, which was a Swin Flex. I got a bear canister and also an ice axe which was black diamond. But one thing that stayed with me throughout were my Lecky cork light trekking poles. I could not be without these. These were a lifesaver through all the conditions that I was in. And lastly, my passport, permit, Swiss army knife, compass, and in this little bag I used to just keep my money and my credit cards. I hope this video has been helpful and as promised I will put a link in the description box below for my lighter pack list so you can have a look at that online. I'll also link my video which shows you everything that I had before I went out on the hike and I'll also put all the items with links next to them so you can see what I've been talking about today as well. If you have any comments or questions I've not answered today please feel free to put them in the comment section below and I will get back to you. And I'll also make some more videos about the gear and how it's gone on trail, how things have held up, such as my tent, my pack, my sleep system. If you have anything else you want me to review, again, put them in the comment section below and I will do that. Meanwhile, you can check out my posts on Instagram and on Facebook and just feel free to contact me if you have any questions or want anything else. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Bye.